Hi, everyone. We are here to talk about Weeshed, the book by Kate Davies. Today, we're talking about chapter one, which is titled Mend. What did you think about the first chapter, Linda? I liked it very much. I, I think it's a wonderful concept to take something like mending that you normally were taught to do that in a way that is invisible so that the item looks new again. And introduced to this woman, um, Cynthia Pym, Celia, mm -hmm. I stand corrected, Celia Pym, who kind of takes the art of mending and makes it visible. And I just love that concept. I've got all kinds of notes here uh, about to help me take it in and reflect on it. Um, for example, she talks about how if the when you take something that is um, worn, it tells you something about the person who wore it. For example, I'm always um, wearing out my right knee in my jeans. <laughs> wow. <laughs> always. I've always just done that. And I, and I thought, well, I guess it says about me that I'm an active person. I like to spend time on the floor. I'm always um, bending down and getting up, hanging out on the floor. And I guess there might come a time when I wear my jeans and I'm much less active. And I'm not going to put holes in my knees anymore. <laughs> and how wonderful it is that I can still put holes in my knees. And why not celebrate that and enjoy the act of um, mending my my jeans? Put 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 a big patch on there that that is um, unapologetic. Yeah, it's so interesting. I'm thinking about the Japanese approach of like the visible mending, the name escapes me right now, but it's, you know, it's beautiful and it really does add to the fabric, mm -hmm. both in strength and aesthetic and depending on what color thread you choose and all of the stitch choices, um, it just creates something completely new and beautiful and that's the flavor of this chapter for me. On page 25, um, Pim says, I value tenderness. And that really struck out to me when I was reading this chapter this week. And she says, it's important to me as an approach to working. There's a tenderness in noticing holes, worn out things, damage, and also in handling objects, garments, and materials. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that gentleness comment goes with her, her thought toward the beginning of the chapter when she says, Creativity does not have to be partnered with any sort of violent or aggressive process. <laughs> I guess, um, depending on what your, your craft is, sometimes there is a lot of action and violence in creativity, but not for Celia Pym. Her creativity is very gentle. Yeah, I'm thinking about some of the creativity craft books, like the act of creativity that I've read about. And the books that resonate with me certainly are a more tender approach and sort of creating the conditions for creativity to happen versus like the forcing of creativity. Um, yes. Yeah, something just came to mind about... Um... I'm trying to remember where I read it. Was it here? It talked about, oh my gosh, it was from my other book that I was reading. I've been reading the memoirs of Matthew McConaughey. Oh, interesting. Kind of my, my actor crush. Oh. <laughs> he recently turned 50 and wrote his memoirs. And at the end of this chapter, he writes about 
something that he does, which is terrible. He's caught in a terrible lie. And I, I just was really moved by his humility and writing about it. And his very last sentence in the book was something about, um, I should probably go get it so that I don't misquote it because it kind of goes with this. The whole humility of, of mending, you know, especially in our relationships with others. But it was something about like, without violence, you can't have intimacy. That's what it was. Mm. It sounds peculiar. I guess she's saying that mending doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be violent or aggressive. But McConaughey's point was that sometimes in the mending, there is conflict, you know, especially in our relationship. And if we're afraid to ever pursue um, conflict with those we're close to, we're never going to have that mending, right? It's really easy to just kind of ignore. Gloss over. Right? Yeah, it's not easy to mend things sometimes. Oh, I lost you. Oh, <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> right, and it's something I learned in marriage counseling too, that you have to be willing to face the conflict in order to get to the mending. Um, so it's, it's another piece of mending. Sometimes I guess like, um, sometimes when you're mending something, you do have to cut something up in order to make it better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm thinking about a recent project that I mended where I had literally worn out the elbows of a sweater and the fibers were barely there, like thread bare fibers. And it was a struggle for me to sort of build up the gumption and the courage to mend it because I didn't want to create more damage. But I knew that if I didn't do something, the damage would naturally happen because the fibers were so worn. And then like there was this whole evolution of thinking about the problem and how I was going to problem solve for it and what materials to pick, you know, do I cut out the damage? Do I leave it there? Like all of these decisions and choices were did difficult. You, did you do it? I did do it. Oh, yeah. That's great. That's great. Wow. So did you use a piece of material? Um, I decided to use, um, so it's a 100% wool sweater that I had made. Um, it's in the worsted weight, Aran weight. You know, it's one of the medium weight garments, but I used, I patched the elbows with a fingering weight blend mm -hmm. with the nylon content because I wanted that um, structure. I needed a little bit of that strength from the nylon and it's it doesn't match it's a visible men so i'll have to bring it and show it in oh yeah next, but next time that sounds really yeah. cool so you had to make the patch as well as sew it on well i what i ended up doing was a duplicate stitch oh. like an elbow patch but wow you With know fingering weight yarn mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm going to try to do. I brought our homework assignment with this chapter. Yeah. Mend, mend something. Mm -hmm. So I brought in two pair of socks. One, one that uh, is about 10 years old. I, I had done, done some duplicate stitch on this one sock to try to mend it, but I didn't do a very good job. And I think when the other sock wore out too, I just gave up I was going to throw them out but I yeah. really thought I didn't I'm going to try again on those and then this one just has a big proper hole oh my yeah so I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do I I barely wore these socks before they got a hole in them it was obviously the right. wrong material to use for socks um but one has been sitting on my shelf for 10 years the other one maybe just a year and because of this chapter I'm going to dig out my materials and at least repair one sock this week. <laughs>
Yeah, and sometimes our the materials we choose set up the mend. I'm thinking about when you're making socks, if you use an afterthought heel, that's naturally an easy repair to make if something does happen to the heel of your sock, just to swap it out and do it again mm -hmm. with fresh yarn. Um, versus, you know, like a duplicate stitch or a patch or the weaving approach. Yeah, I, I was thinking, especially with these socks that I knit with the wrong material, maybe I could just pick up the stitches along the heel and make a dupe and make an afterthought heel over top of it. That could be interesting. We'll have to see what happens. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, I kind of like to try that because the other sock is just going to wear out there too. So mm. lots of good thoughts from her. I guess we're going to continue this chapter next week too, right? And, and yes. um, possibly invite a guest. We'll see how that goes. And you're going to bring your sweater that yeah. you did. Mm -hmm. So good thoughts and an interesting person to read about this Celia Pym. Yeah, I have mm -hmm. more to say about her too, but I'm going to save it for next week. Great. Okay. <laughs> so thank, for, thank you for joining us this week um, as we're really getting into the meat of this book. And mm -hmm. we'll spend another um, week or two on chapter one and try some mending. <laughs> Please remember to allow for creative moments in your life. You'll see some tiny improvements as you go along. Thank you for joining us. Bye-bye. <laughs>